नमस्ते हेलो एंड वेलकम टू यूपीएससी फॉर एवरीवन इमेजिन इफ कोलंबस हैड एक्सेस टू जीपीएस एस वी हैव द वर्ल्ड एस वी नो टुडे वुड हैव बीन एन एंटायरली डिफरेंट प्लेस सो हाउ डू वी लोकेट एनी प्लेस ऑन द अर्थ द सिंपल आंसर इज जीपीएस और एनी अदर सैटेलाइट बेस्ड नेविगेशन सिस्टम एंड हाउ डज दिस सिस्टम वर्क दिस सिस्टम वर्क्स ऑन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द जोग्राफिक ग्रेड कंप्राइजिंग ऑफ latitudes and longitudes my name is abhinav and in this video i am going to tell you about the concept of the geographic grid let's get started a key geographical question throughout the human experience has been where am i we have always been curious about our place in the world and about our surroundings and if you look at our ancestors along with being great hunters and gatherers they were also great explorers and adventurists and today sharing our location has become both a matter of convenience and concern on one hand it enables you to easily reach any destination book cabs let your loved ones know about your whereabouts get your stuff delivered right at your doorstep among other things but on the other it has also become a threat to your privacy as your location has been constantly monitored by the apps and devices corporations and even governments the modern navigation system is based on the principles that date back to the ancient times navigation started with the relative positioning of stars and galaxies and the use of sunlight and winds the ancient greek geographer ptolemy created a grid system and listed the coordinates for places throughout the known world in his book geographia but it wasn't until the middle ages that the latitude and longitude system was developed and implemented the use of satellite based systems is only recent in the long history of human beings now in order to precisely locate any spot in the world we use a geographic coordinate system or a grid system consisting of two sets of lines that intersect at right angles allowing the location of any point on the surface to be described by the appropriate intersection this system is measured in degrees of latitude and longitude this is similar to the cartesian grid consisting of the x axis and the y axis ring a bell for those who are not comfortable with mathematics it looks something like this the geographic coordinate system starts with an imaginary grid of lines that cover the entire planet and locations are measured based on both x and y coordinates within the grid so far so good but there is a problem and that is the shape of the earth now before i tell you about the problem let us get an idea about the earth's shape earth is almost but not quite spherical the earth rotates on its axis and this axis of rotation has implications on the earth shape now the ends of the axis are known as poles and an imaginary circle midway from the poles running along the surface of the earth is known as the equator now if you make a cut through the equator a cross section revealed would be circular but a similar cut from pole to pole would be an ellipse rather than a circle now why is that so any rotating body has a tendency to bulge around its equator and flatten at the polar ends of its rotational axis although the rocks of earth may seem quite rigid and immovable to us they are sufficiently pliable to allow earth to develop a bulge around its middle the difference between the slightly flattened polar diameter of earth and the slightly bulging equatorial diameter is only about 0.3% thus our planet is properly described as an oblate spheroid rather than a true sphere however because this variation from true sphericity is exceedingly small in most cases we treat earth as if it were a perfect sphere now coming back to the problem posed by the earth shape in relation to the geographic grid have you ever tried to gift wrap a ball if you have you must know that it is impossible to lay a flat sheet of paper over a sphere without creasing folding or cutting it let me demonstrate it for you 
Imagine this is our Earth with its axis. And this is our grid system. Now as I try to wrap it around the Earth, see what happens. The system gets distorted. This simple fact has caused map makers problems for centuries. As a solution, this rectangular grid system has been reconfigured for Earth's spherical surface, forming a geographic grid consisting of an orderly system of circles known as meridians and parallels, or a system of east-west and north-south lines known as latitudes and longitudes respectively, that are used to locate a position on the globe. Now we know how the grid is actually modified as per the shape of the Earth. But there is one more problem. It is difficult to describe the location of a particular point on a perfect sphere as there is no starting point or the end point. For meaningfully marking any location, we need points of reference like 0, 0 in a Cartesian grid. Fortunately for us, Earth rotates on its axis and we can use its rotation axis as a starting point to describe locations. Earth's rotation axis is an imaginary line passing through the Earth that connects the points on the surface called the North Pole and the South Pole. Further, if we visualize an imaginary plane passing through Earth halfway between the poles and perpendicular to the axis of rotation, we have another valuable reference feature, the plane of the equator. Where this plane intersects Earth's surface is the imaginary midline of Earth called simply the equator. We use the North Pole, South Pole rotational axis and the equatorial plane as the natural reference features for measuring and describing locations on the Earth's surface. Now let me tell you about latitudes. The angular location of a place north or south of the equator is the latitude. We can project a line from any location on Earth's surface to the center of the Earth. The angle between this line and the equatorial plane is the latitude of that location. Latitude is expressed in degrees, minutes and seconds. There are 360 degrees in a circle, 60 minutes in one degree and 60 seconds in one minute. Latitude varies from 0 degree at the equator to 90 degree north at the North Pole and 90 degree south at the South Pole. The equator itself is simply referred to as having a latitude of 0 degree. Any position north of the equator is north latitude and any position south of the equator is south latitude. A line connecting all the points of the same latitude is called parallel because it is parallel to all other lines of latitude. Now because latitude is expressed as an angle, it can be infinitely subdivided. Parallels can be constructed for every degree of latitude or even for fractions of a degree of latitude. Although it is impossible to either construct or visualize an unlimited number of parallels, seven latitudes are of particular significance in general study of the Earth. They are Equator 0 degree, Tropic of Cancer 23.5 degree north, Tropic of Capricorn 23.5 degree south, Arctic Circle 66.5 degree north, Antarctic Circle 66.5 degree south, North Pole 90 degree north and the South Pole 90 degree south. The North Pole and the South Pole are of course points rather than lines but can be thought of as infinitely small parallels. We will explore the significance of these seven parallels when we discuss the seasons. So this was all about latitude. Now let me tell you about longitude. While latitude comprises the north-south component of Earth's grid system, the other half is longitude, which is an angular description of east-west location also measured in degrees, minutes and seconds. Longitude is represented by imaginary lines extending from pole to pole and crossing all parallels at right angles. These lines are called meridians. They are not parallel to one another except where they cross the equator. Any pair of meridians is farthest apart at the equator becoming increasingly close together northward and southward and finally converging at the poles. Now we know the latitude and the longitude, but how do we measure them? What is the reference point? Where is our 0, 0? Like a Cartesian grid, 
we need to establish the baselines as the reference for measurements. While the equator acts as the natural reference for latitude, establishing the reference for longitudes was quite tricky. Let us see how. For most of the recorded history, there was no accepted longitude in the baseline. Each country would select its own prime meridian as the reference line for east-west measurement. Thus the French measured from the meridian of Paris, the Italians from the meridian of Rome, and so forth. At least 13 prime meridians were in use in the 1800s and not until the late 1800s was standardization finally achieved. In 1884, the meridian passing through the Royal Observatory at Greenwich, England, just east of London, was chosen as the prime meridian for all longitudinal measurement. The principal argument for adopting the Greenwich meridian as the prime meridian was a practical one. More than two-thirds of the world's shipping lines already used the Greenwich meridian as a navigational base. Thus, an imaginary north-south plane passing through Greenwich and through Earth's axis of rotation represents the plane of prime meridian. The angle between this plane and a plane passing through any other point and the axis of Earth is a measure of longitude. Now let me tell you as to how we measure the longitude. Longitude is measured both east and west of the prime meridian to a maximum of 180 degree in each direction exactly halfway around the globe from the prime meridian in the middle of the Pacific Ocean is the 180 degree meridian. All places on Earth then have a location that is either east longitude or west longitude except for points exactly on the prime meridian described simply as the 0 degree longitude or exactly the 180th meridian described as 180 degree longitude. The distance between any two meridians varies predictably. At the equator, the surface length of 1 degree of longitude is about the same as that of 1 degree of latitude. However, because meridians converge at the poles, the distance covered by 1 degree of longitude decreases poleward, diminishing to zero at the poles where all meridians meet at a point. So, how do we locate any point on Earth? Like plotting any point on the Cartesian grid, the location of any place on Earth's surface can be described with great precision by reference to detailed latitude and longitude data. All we have to know is the latitude and longitude and where these two converge, we get the location. So this was all about the geographic grid. I hope this was helpful. For more such content, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay happy and have a great day.